Hi, I'm Nicolas Lopez. I'm here in Spanish Size 2013, and I'm the director of Aftershock. See ya. A big congratulations to you for receiving the Latinovator Award here at Hispanicize. Thanks. Now tell us, an event like Hispanicize, how important is it for filmmakers, especially in this bicultural media landscape? I think that it's really important, uh, especially with these kind of movies like Aftershock, that was a movie that was completely shot in Chile, that has a lot of Latin talent in it, but it's also a movie that's going to be released uh, wide here in the U.S., and I think that that's like the, it's like the perfect match. And that's why I think that this festival is really important because, in a way, it's helping to link those two cultures and, and turn and move into an event. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love that you said that you wanted to film in Chile because there was no rules, you can do it how you wanted to. Can you expand on that and what the inspiration and when that aha moment you had that Chile was a place to be? I mean, what always happened to me is that every time that I started dealing with making a movie in the US, there were so many, the process was so long and sometimes you could work in a movie and then suddenly because some CEO change, like there, there are many things that you can't control mm -hmm. that suddenly you can spend four years of your life in a project that doesn't, that doesn't no. take off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and, and that kind of happened to me. I developed a project with Salma Hayek. Mm -hmm. um, in, she had a company that was called Ventana Azul and they had a deal with MGM and then suddenly MGM went bankrupt. So, and, and, and basically all the projects that we were developing, it, it, was, it was a pain in the ass. And I was mm -hmm. like, I don't want to go through, through this again. And I knew how to make movies in Chile. I knew that I could make them for a price. And the only thing that was different was that the actor wanted to be speaking English instead of Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I was like, why we don't make movies? I know that I can make a movie that can look like an American, like a big American movie uh, for a third of, of their budget. So that what happened with Aftershock. We, we made a movie that looks like a $30 million movie or more with less than four millions. And let's talk about the actual movie Aftershock. Mm -hmm. In terms of the inspiration, what moment did you say, this is the direction I'm going to take with Aftershock? Well, the movie is, is kind of based in two events. Uh, mm -hmm. um, it's, and the movie talks about the randomness of life. It talks about how you can be, you know, like we can be here you know, in the middle of an interview and suddenly there is an earthquake or a tsunami. And, and what do you do, you know? Like, do you escape or do you help somebody? Mm -hmm. and, and the tagline of the movie is that the only thing more terrifying than mother nature is human nature. And that was like the aha moment. We were, we were like, oh, that's very interesting that we're making a movie that is about an earthquake, but it's also about the earthquake that happened inside the characters. And, and, and that's what the movie is about, in a way. Mm -hmm. And where do you see the future going with future filmmakers in terms of their bilingual talents? I think that now countries are imaginary, like, or the borderline, they are just imaginary. Mm. You, they are imaginary lines because now you have access to the same culture, that, to the same movies that they are being released in the US, in Chile, or in Peru, or anywhere because of the internet. And suddenly you're listening to the same music. You're like, we, we live in a generation where the people, like, I'm 30 years old now. There is a new generation that was born in the 90s, that they are 20 years old now. Mm -hmm. And that generation basically grew up with internet and having access to everything. Like, I remember that for me, coming to the US was cool because I could buy DVDs yeah. <laughs> and books and whatever. And now, like, having something physical, is, it doesn't make any sense. So that's why we're releasing this movie day and date uh, on theaters and uh, on video on demand. So the movie could be available for everyone. Mm -hmm. and, and, that's, and I think that that's gonna be the future like for, for, a different, for any person that wants to do their own content in a different way, you know, basically they're gonna end up releasing the movie with the help of, now we have uh, the Weinstein Company and yeah. Dimension and Radius, that, and they have been very supportive and we love them, but it's gonna be a moment where you know, people are going to create their content and they're going to have somebody to distribute everything and that's going to be it, you know? And speaking of internet, what role does social media play in how you promote your films and how you reach out to your fans and the people that you know? A lot. Like, <laughs> I, I'm always... Tweeting? <laughs> I'm always tweeting. I'm always on Facebook and Instagram. And, and all the actors of my movies are also, you know, doing the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. So we're always connected and, and, and that's the only way of creating hype. Mm -hmm. And also it's cool because the audience, uh, they, they feel part of the project because in, in the case of Aftershock, they, they are people that they have been reading my tweets since, I don't know, two years ago when I had the idea. 
and and now everybody's really excited because like I I took a picture of the of the of the, of the poster and they were like mm -hmm. oh that's cool like there is a teacher poster you know like you can get them excited and also you can make them part of the process of course and, and they're retweeting all of your things exactly. and hashtagging everything and and that's <laughs> yeah and and I did that with my trilogy of romantic comedies with que pena tu vida que pena tu boda que pena tu familia those three comedies were completely uh, all the marketing was done mm -hmm. uh, using Facebook and Twitter. And the future for you after Aftershock, what do you think is going to happen? I just uh, produced a new movie called The Green Inferno. Um, that is Eli's next movie as a director. Mm -hmm. And we co-wrote that movie together and my production company also produced the movie. So we're finishing that and, I, and I'm gonna start shooting a new movie in two weeks from now. That is the sequel of my first movie called Promedio Rojo. And I'm shooting that movie now, and the movie's gonna open in October in Chile, and then it's gonna be on Netflix at the end of the year. So basically, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna keep shooting. You're staying very busy. Well, thank you very much, and no, again, a big congratulations. Thanks.